here and watching a message from Redbud Baptist Church featuring Pastor Carlos Hinojos. Redbud is located at 801 Slide Road in Lubbock, Texas. Please join us for Sunday services at 1040 a.m. We're a going church, growing disciples. Enjoy the message. I want to welcome you to Redbud Baptist Church this morning. This is the internet addition to Redbud Baptist Church, the chance for us to worship together. But you're going to be in your home. We're here at the church. We love you guys. We miss you guys. If you're a visitor here, we want to hear about you as well. So if you want to text welcome to 806 329 3030. Again, 806 329 3030. Just text welcome. We would love to hear from you and we'll respond to you. But while you guys are at home, I want you to remind you that, guys, we're excited. Every opportunity is a chance for us to grow, a chance for us to show Christ. You are the church, not this building, but you are the church. So wherever you are right now, wherever you are gathered right now, Red Bud is there. Christ is working through you. God's church is at work wherever you are. So we want you to grab your Bible to get ready for the sermon. We want you to sing out loud right there in front of your screen or with your phone. Uh, wake up the neighbors, whatever you need to do to bring the message into your home. We're going to be excited about that. Uh, I mentioned in our earlier video that we're going to get together eventually, and we're going to be excited for that so much. And it's going to be like Old Testament times when Nehemiah built the wall, and Ezra was at the water gate, and he was preaching the word. When they came together and made that covenant, or renewed that covenant with God, they were excited to be together, to worship together once more after being in exile. And that's how we're going to be. We're going to come back together here in a few weeks. So hold on. Be strong in faith. Take this time to reach out to your neighbors, to rest, whatever you need to do. But right now, we want you to worship with us. It's going to be the same as usual, as normal as possible, because we're going to have Gershom leading the worship. We're going to have Ling Zhu playing the piano. We're going to have the pastor preaching, and I'm going to pray for us right now. So let's get, go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, just bless this service. Bless this online edition. Lord, just allow your word to get out throughout the nation right now because whatever goes on in this world, it's not going to stop the word from getting out. Lord, your word is true. And our faith is built on you and nothing more than you. So Lord, we know it's going to continue on strongly, even through these times that we're going through right now. For it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. It's just like Billy Graham said. He said, methods are going to change, but the message is the same. I hope you enjoy this. Good morning, Redbud. It's good to see you this morning, and thank you for joining our online service today. I know that we are not able to be together physically, but spiritually, we can join our hearts together. In the book of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 20, God says, Where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there with you. So we can take comfort knowing that spiritually we are together in Christ's name. I've selected some really special hymns this morning for us to sing. Considering all that's going on in our world and in our country at this time, I wanted to find some hymns that speak of God's faithfulness and his love for his people. So we're going to start this morning with a great hymn called How Firm a Foundation. You can follow along with the words on the screen. Omnipotent hand 
when through fiery trials thy pathway shall light, my grace all sufficient shall be thy supply. The flame shall not hurt thee, I only design thy dross to consume and thy gold to refine. Our next two hymns that we're going to sing First one is victory in Jesus, because we know we are victorious in Christ. And then the next hymn after that is, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. This second verse, listen to this. I think it speaks very clearly of what we're experiencing today. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful? Who will all our sorrows share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Let's sing these next two hymns with all the passion and love we have for Christ. I heard an old, old story how a Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood's atoning. Then I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing, how he made the lame to walk again, and caused the blind to see. And then I cried, dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea. About the angels singing and the old redemption story. And some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege you carry, everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit, oh, what 
with needless pain we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrows share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden, cumbered with a load of care? Precious Savior, still our refuge, take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends despise, forsake thee, take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee, thou wilt find a solace there. Good morning, Redbud. I'm so glad to be with you this morning. And I'm excited that uh, we are still together. I'm glad that uh, you're joining us if you're a guest of ours this morning and you're joining us online for the first time, we thank you. We really appreciate that. I want to thank Redbud for being faithful in their support of their staff and their prayers for all of us. We're excited that as a church we can still meet together no matter, no matter what the circumstances are, what we find ourselves in, we're, we're together. And uh, you are online and you're watching, so thank you very much for that. We're going to continue our series this morning uh, that we have started in the book of Philippians. The title of the series is The Secret of Joy. Today's title is Joy in Humility. And so I invite you to take a Bible uh, and go with me to the second chapter of Philippians. And this morning we're going to be reading verses 5 through 11. And so as you make your way there, <clears throat> I'm going to begin reading the text which says this, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Before we get into our message this morning, I want to ask that you bow your head right there where you are and let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we come to you this morning. We're grateful to be <clears throat> together as a church. Um, thank you, Lord, for technology, for the ability to come together and be a church, even though we may be apart physically. We are together spiritually, and we thank you for that. Father, we thank you for this great nation and thank you for our leaders and everyone who is involved in making sure that we as a nation do everything that we can to defeat this enemy this virus that we are facing thank you Lord for the support of the church as the church prays for our leaders and together we come to make this nation a better nation to protect those who are vulnerable and to strengthen those who are strong. Father, I pray that you lead us and guide us. Without you, we can do nothing. And so I pray that as we look at this text and we see the, 
modeled before us, we too would take the attitude of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, we ask these things and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. I want to start out by making this statement this morning, and I hope that you understand where I'm coming from. It is impossible to have Christ in you and not have a servant's heart. Another way that we could say it is, if you claim to be a follower of Jesus, but do not exhibit or do not live out or do not practice a servant's attitude, then there's the possibility that you don't know Jesus Christ, that you've never come to that spot in your life where you truly have come to understand what it means to be a believer. Because you see, in the text this morning, God clearly gives us an example of what it means to have the mind of Christ. As you recall in our previous messages, we've talked about that. In chapter 1 and verse 27, we talked about having the mind of Christ and the attitude of Christ. In verses 1 and 4, we also address the subject of the mind of Christ and the unity that that Paul wanted so much for the Philippian church. Paul had some concerns about the unity of the church. He was in prison and um, he was far away from the Philippian church and he was concerned about where they were in their unity. And so Paul makes an effort to remind this church that they needed to be united. And to be united, uh, there are some things that are required. And Paul tells us in chapter 2 that we need to have the mind of Christ. And so um, there's another passage of scripture that I want to give you today. It is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14 to 16. And in that passage of scripture, Paul stated it this way. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. The we in that text that Paul is referring to is the believer. The believer has the mind of Christ. And so I want to talk to us about how do you find joy in humility and how do you, what does it mean to have the mind of Christ? And so I want to give you one point uh, this morning and there are four words that I want to give you this morning that will help us get to where Paul wants us to get. The first point that I want to give you this morning is the mind of Christ requires a certain disposition. You must have the disposition that Jesus Christ had as Paul describes it in chapter 2 of the letter to the Philippians. Paul tells us in verse 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. The word that Paul uses for mind is a word that means attitude or a mindset. And Paul tells the Philippian Christians that if you want to have unity and you need unity, you must have the mind of Christ. You must be disposed to the mind of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the attitude that the Lord Jesus Christ had at the time uh, of Paul writing this letter. One commentator said about the point of this passage is the main point here is not to identify that God became man but to show that in God becoming man, you have the supreme illustration of humility, an illustration which we are called to follow. And so while this text that we read this morning is rich with theology, in fact, um, commentators or scholars tell us that the text itself and the way that it is written in the Greek 
is a hymn, and uh, they, 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 they would have recognized it as a, as a hymn. And so while it is filled with theological uh, truth and doctrine, the point of the text is not to give us this artwork or this elaborate expression of theology or doctrine. The point that Paul wants to make is that we have a practical, ethical experience when it comes to humility. Jesus is the epitome of what it means to be humble, and he tells us so in this text. And so I want to give us this morning four words that will help us understand what Jesus did, what was his mindset when he did it, and how we can have that same mindset. And in having the mindset of the Lord Jesus Christ, it'll draw us together. It'll make us a united church. And not only that, but we will experience the same joy that the Lord Jesus Christ experienced as he did this. And so I want to ask you to take your, your or turn to um, verse 5, when, when Paul says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And then verse 6 says, Who being... In the form of God. Now let me stop there for a second. There are several words that are very important in this text. The first one is found in verse 6 when it says, who being. And the word being there is the same word or the same idea or the same concept that we find in John chapter 1 and verse 1, gospel according to John. And chapter 1 and verse John, uh, first, verse 1. And there the apostle wrote, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. And so when Paul, in the letter to the Philippians, in chapter 2 says, in verse 6, who being, when he says being, Paul is telling us that at the beginning, in the beginning, the beginning that we know of uh, in Genesis chapter 1, Paul is telling us that Jesus was already there. That was, that's where he was. He is eternal. And uh, we are reminded that when, uh, of, the, of the time when the religious leaders of the day wanted to stone the Lord Jesus Christ because he had equated himself or elevated himself to be an equal with God. And for that, they wanted to stone him. And Jesus was telling the truth. And so when Paul says in verse 6, who being, he is telling us uh, that Jesus was there in the beginning. And so the first word that I want to give you there is that Paul addresses the existence of the Lord Jesus Christ in the beginning. But then he gives us another word uh, in verse 6, and he says, who being in the form of God. The word form there is a, is a word, it's different in the English than it is in the Greek. In the Greek, it, it, it can mean both things, but in the English, it only has one, we only have one word. But the word that we use for form there in the original means or describes the essence or the nature of the person. And so when Paul tells us in chapter uh, 2 in verse 6 and describing that Jesus in, uh, being in the form of God, what he is telling us is that Jesus' is essence, his nature, his character, who he is internally is none other than God. And so he, he tells us of his e e eternal existence. He tells us of his essence, his nature. Jesus was all of these things from the very beginning. And then Paul continues in verse 6 and he says, Who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. And the next word that, that I'm going to give you this morning is the word equal. The word equal. And so <clears throat> we, we understand that when Jesus um, came down and he left heaven, he had a, a, a position in heaven of who he was and what, what, what he was. And so it was his essence, his, his existence was eternal. His essence and his nature was very, the very nature of God. And then he was equal or is equal with God. Jesus is God. 
And I wish that we had more time to get into these words and elaborate on them. But as I said earlier, the purpose of the text and the purpose of Paul writing this is to, is to get us to the point of the subject of humility. And so I, I, I want to move on. And so finally, the, the final word is the word exploitation. And I want you to notice what he says in verse 6 and 7. He says, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a servant and coming in the likeness of men. Now in next week's message, we're going to get into some of these other words that he's describing here, but I want to I point our attention to a couple of words here. In uh, verse 6, he uses the word robbery. And in verse 7, he tells us, but made himself of no reputation. And so we've already learned that the first three words talk about who he is, who he was. He's, he's eternally existent. He is the essence of who he is, is that he is, he is, is, is by nature and in his character and in his essence God. And then he is equal uh, with God. God the Father, God the, the, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, they're all equal. But in all of that, those are what some, one writer said, his, his rights, who he was. And one, one commentator said that Jesus did not uh, actually give up his rights, but he gave up the right to his rights. And this is what Paul is talking about when he says in this text that he did not consider it robbery. Uh, and in verse 7, uh, he made himself of no reputation. That though he had a right to all of these things, and though he had, to, he had the right to be who he was and did all of those things, rather than exploit those rights, and rather than, than demand his rights, rather than be uh, who he was, he made himself, he chose to, he willingly made himself of no reputation. Now, we won't get into that word today, but here's what we need to understand, that if we're ever going to achieve unity in any, any church setting as Christians, we must understand that unless we have humility, we will never achieve the unity that Paul is talking about. It is the only way that unity can be achieved in the church. As I said earlier, Jesus gave up the right to all of his rights, to all of his privileges, to all of his possessions that he may, that, that he may humble himself. He didn't, um, he, didn't, he didn't desire to hang on to those things, but he gave them up willingly. Somebody said, unity ends where a demand for my rights, privileges, possessions, begins or becomes the soul drive of my life. One of the amazing things that I noticed this week, and I, I promised myself that I would not talk a lot about uh, all that has been going on here. You have more information on the subject of the coronavirus than uh, you want to handle. But one, one particular aspect of all of these things has really troubled me. And you have seen it and you've heard about it. And that is that when you walk into a grocery store, you walk into a grocery store these days and you come into an empty grocery store. Now, there are still many items in the grocery store, but the essential items, the items that everybody is looking for are not there. They tell us that there is no shortage of food uh, and though <clears throat> the distribution of that food has uh, maybe run into some snags here and there, but grocery stores are empty. And they tell us that the reason the grocery stores are empty is because of hoarding. Is because people heard the news and, and looked at what could possibly happen out there and they decided that it was better to hoard or to take on more than they actually needed in order to protect themselves. In other words, as one person put it this week, they said that the mindset of many in America during these days has been better 
you than me. In other words, it is better for you to be out of all of these necessities than for me to be out of them. And so I am justified in going to the grocery store and purchasing everything I can get my hands on so that me and my family can be okay no matter what may happen to my neighbor. I want to submit to you that <clears throat> I hope that that's not the attitude that those of us who are members of Redbud Baptist Church have taken. I hope that we have decided that we would have and accumulate only that which we need for the period of time that they have designated because we know that Jesus Christ is our Lord and our King and that he is able to provide for us our needs and meet our needs not according to the riches of our government, not according to the riches of the, of, the, of the farmers in America or the distribution centers all across the nation, but according to the riches of God in glory. And so I pray that that is the attitude that we take. Paul wanted the Philippian church to carry with it the attitude and the humility of the Lord Jesus Christ. On the other hand, we are seeing in some cases such an awesome display of unselfish dedication and devotion to making sure that others are, uh, are, their needs are met. For example, we have witnessed and seen uh, certain particular industries um, sacrifice a product that they could make. And I'm thinking, um, I'm thinking of the story that I read that uh, <clears throat> some of the distilleries who are in the business of making uh, alcoholic beverages decided to take their operation and convert it into an operation that would make the sanitizing uh, product that we all are desperately looking for. Uh, and they did it because they wanted to make sure that people who need that product have it. And there are other stories of people who are stepping out and doing things uh, to help out their neighbor. In other words, Many of these industries and these businesses uh, are doing all of these things and going even beyond that, even if it means exposure to the very virus that we are trying to avoid. I want you to think for a second about the Lord Jesus Christ. In the text, and we'll see it in the second part of, the me of this, of this uh, message uh, next week. But in, in this text, the Bible says that Jesus took on the form of a bondservant. That he took on the likeness of man. May I remind you that when Jesus came and he took on the likeness of man, Paul is not referring to the likeness of man prior to the fall. In other words, Jesus did not come to earth and, and, be, and became the Adam prior to the fall. The perfect Adam. The perfect human being. He did not do that. Jesus came and he put on himself the likeness of man as man is in the fall. Now we know that the Bible tells us that he did not sin, but he took upon our sin. That means that Jesus felt like you felt. Jesus cried like you cried. Jesus did all and experienced all of the things that you experience, and yet without sin. Jesus, Paul tells us in this text, lowered himself even unto death and the death of the cross. Paul wants you and me to understand that if there was ever a model of humility, there is no other model more perfect than what Jesus Christ did according to this text. 
This is the attitude that Paul is wanting to project and urging the Philippian church to adopt. This attitude is the, is the attitude of the mindset that leads to the right action, which is what we're going to talk about next week. I want to take just a moment to say to you this morning, if you are watching online today and your attitude about life has been one like I described earlier about the people who hoarded all this food. If your life has been about you and yourself and all of the things that you can accomplish at the expense of everybody else, I want to tell you that you'll never understand what it means to experience the unity of the Lord Jesus Christ and, you'll, and you don't understand what it means to hum, be humble like the Lord Jesus Christ. Church, I want to tell you this morning that if you and I come to the building that we call Redbud Baptist Church and we're more concerned about where we're going to sit and how long we're going to be preached to or sung to, if we're more concerned about how it all benefits me and takes care of me and meets all of my needs, but we ignore the needs of our community and the needs of our neighbor, then we do not have the mind of the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to get to the point, and you as a believer need to get to the point where you humble yourself. Yes, you are a child of God. Yes, you uh, have certain privileges and rights as a child of God. But like the Lord Jesus Christ, it would not hurt you to set those aside that you might reach others. And if, the, and if you have taken and adopted that attitude that is not the mindset of the Lord Jesus Christ, let me urge you this morning, while you are the, right there where you are, I would encourage you and urge you to go to God and say, Father, forgive me for adopting a selfish attitude and help me to become like Christ in his humility. Maybe you're here this morning and you, as you watch, you're thinking about you. And you're thinking about how you're living your life and you're doing everything in your, in your ability and in your power to meet the standard, whatever standard that may be, so that you can be right with God. In other words, you're doing everything you can to get to heaven. I want to remind you that the Bible says that we're all sinners. We have sinned against God and we need God's forgiveness. I'm asking you this morning to, to, to go to the Lord Jesus Christ and ask him to forgive you of your sin and ask him to forgive you of all that you are and who you are and ask him to come into your life and change you. The Bible calls that transformation. You say, Pastor, how do I do that? How do I get away from a selfish attitude and, and come to the place of humility and humble myself before God. Let me give you just a, a, a quick word. The Bible says that if we will confess our sin, acknowledge it before God, and repent of our sin, and accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior, the Bible says that the moment we do that and confess it with our mouth, we shall be saved. So you might pray a prayer something like this. Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner and I know that I need forgiveness. I ask you to forgive me of my sin. Jesus, I believe that you died for me on the cross and I accept what you have done for me and invite you to come into my heart. If you prayed that prayer or something like it today, let me invite you to do something and we'll be glad to help you and take the next step. In just a moment, there's going to be a screen that's going to pop up and you'll have a number. That number is 806-329-3000. Three zero. 
329-3030. Let me urge you to text the word LIFE to that number. And we will make sure that we contact you. If you prayed that prayer, if you are needing spiritual guidance and spiritual help, we will reach out to you if you will just do that. We want you to know that God loves you and he loves you deeply. There's absolutely no way that you can get right with God outside of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we want to help you do that. If you're here this morning and you're looking online and you need a church, you need a place to belong, I invite you to consider Redbud Baptist Church. You can go on our website. You can call uh, to the church office number, which is 806-799-3832. 799-3832. You can leave us a message, and we'll reach out to you this week. I know that we cannot come together and we're having to practice social distancing and all of those things. But I promise you that somebody from this church will give you a call and reach out to you. Let me pray for you this morning and I want to thank you for listening in and I hope that today's message has impacted you today. God wants us to be humble. And if there was ever a time for the need of a humble church, it is right now. Let me urge you to do that. Father, we come before you now. And Lord, there is a, there is a huge need in our society for a people who maybe have privileges in Jesus Christ but are willing to set those aside just as Jesus did in order that somebody else might come to know Jesus Christ. I pray, God, that you make this church a united church by making it a humble church. May we always be humble, and may we always have the desire to see others come to know Jesus Christ. Father, if there's anybody this morning, as they watched online, Father, if there's anyone who maybe prayed a prayer, and ask Jesus Christ to come into their heart, I pray that you help them to text to that number, the word life, and somebody from this church will reach out to them. Father, help us to do that this week. Father, I know that we are limited in what we can do, but even in our limitations, Father, we can reach out to people. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for a wonderful, wonderful week. And Lord, we know that all things are in your hands, and we thank you, we praise you, we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me do one more thing. I know that we cannot uh, come to church and uh, bring our tithes and our offerings, but let me urge you to, to consider being faithful to the Lord. We're going to receive an offering, and, um, but there are a couple of ways that you can do that. One is that you can do that online. You can go through our app or you can go to our, face, uh, our webpage, and uh, you can follow the instructions there, and uh, uh, you, will, you will be able to give uh, your offering that way. Or you can uh, mail it to the church, and the address of the church is 801 Slide Road, and the zip code to that is 79416. You can just mail it to us and uh, somebody will be here this week and will receive your offering. Or if you are able and you can, uh, you, you can certainly bring it to the office. There'll be somebody here and we'll certainly take your offering. Let me just tell you a quick story uh, about our offering. Last week, <clears throat> you as a church were very faithful and because of your faithfulness, we met budget for the week. And we are so grateful for that. Church, I want to tell you, keep doing that. Keep being faithful to the Lord. And God will be faithful to us. Thank you. And God bless you. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. 
what a privilege you carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer.